This is Karen with NewClevelandRadio.net, and it is time for the Bully Blog. And the Bully Blog is a wonderful podcast because it's so important. And Dave, I think you need to tell our listeners why it's so important because you have a film that is designed about being bullied. Well, first of all, Karen, thank you so much for having me on. And we're also going to meet Esther Yang. I'm very happy that she's here to join us and she runs a non-for-profit in, in New York, multiple non-for-profits actually. And one that does um, involve, you know, the theme of bullying. So we'll definitely learn more about that. I'm looking forward to that. Um, yeah. So the film is called The Reunion. It's about a guy confronting his childhood nemesis from um, his nemesis from from childhood at their high school reunion. And it, it comes from, you know, personal story when I was growing up um, and my story of being bullied. Uh, it's, it's not an autobiography necessarily. It's not a biopic, certainly. But it does come from, you know, a traumatic experience that I had in middle school. And now as a teacher, I'm able to kind of see a lot of that from a different perspective and um, hopefully have some influence in, in curbing some of that, the bullying behavior. Um, just real quick on the movie, and then, you know, I think we can, we can talk more about, you know, the theme of bullying. Uh, the film is about to be picked up for distribution. Um, we're about to sign with a company, uh, not at liberty to say what it is yet, but, but very soon. Um, we just got into our fourth film festival, which is the Soho Film Festival in New York. We're very excited about that. We recently found out that we won Best Picture and Best Director at Nyack Film Festival in New York also. So New York's been very good to us, which makes yeah. sense because it's very much a New York film and a sort of a love letter to, to, um, to the city of New York where, where I'm from. Um, and, um, and yeah, so I think, I think I mentioned everything. Oh, and, and I do wanna reference the website, um, which was created by Jay Cruz and ma maintained by Jay Cruz. He's doing a great job and you can get a, a lot of information about the film, including seeing our trailer um, at thereunionfilm.com, thereunionfilm.com. And there's a link to all of our social media on there as well. And we'll make sure that again is in the show notes. So there's no excuse not to be able just to click on it and get to the website. No excuse. Right. <laughs> so Dave, when I first met you, um, I was impressed by the fact that something so traumatic stayed within you and you decided that you needed to put it out there. And that's one of the things we talk about on many of our podcasts here at New Cleveland Radio, that the more we talk about things, the more aware we become and we can start curing what those problems are. You're always gonna have those memories, but tell our audience, did writing this and uh, performing in it, did it help you get further ahead and sort of like dampen some of those memories? Yeah, I think in a lot of ways it exercised some of those demons for sure. And and now I'm Facebook friends with my my bully or my nemesis. You know, he just, he thanked me for getting into, I mean, he congratulated me for getting into Soho. I've invited him to the screening. And so, you know, there's always that, there's always that fine line, you know, between like speaking up and letting go, you know, and we've talked about that a lot. I mean, and um I'm dealing with it right now. I have, you know, I have a situation, you know, with a neighbor that's that's tenuous, you know, and it's like, how much do we speak up and say what we need to say, and how much do we let go? And that's just always a constant balancing act, you know. Absolutely. And um, but yeah, it's it's definitely been a healing experience to to write the film and then to do the film. And I did have my own sort of confrontation, so to speak, with my nemesis. And you know, I think a lot of a lot of that got got healed but it's an ongoing process we're, we're always dealing with that on, on a daily basis with some form of confrontation and how do we deal with confrontation i think that's really what we were exploring with this film is how do we how do you deal with confrontation in a way where you don't become the bully but you also don't run away or hold it in where it becomes you know um depression or sickness or just living in constant fear absolutely so you have a very special guest with us today. Uh, and besides being special, very beautiful woman there. Introduce us to Esther. 
Well, you know, we we always, one of my visions was always to to link up with a, a charity organization that that dealt with bullying, and um, I through my lawyer. Um, uh, Diane Bradshaw, wonderful lawyer in New York. Uh, Diane knew Esther, and Diane introduced me to Esther, and and we sort of hit it off. And um, I've done a podcast with Esther with her podcast before, and we're just very happy to you know have that sort of that link and that connection. And so um, you know, you and I, Karen, spoke about having guests, and I thought Esther would be a great guest. And I think we want to sort of broadcast and bring to light what she's doing with her non for profit. Uh, super happy, healthy kids. You know, um, thank you, Karen, for in, inviting us. You know, thank you for inviting me as well. And, and Dave, you too. I think bullying is, there's so many different levels of bullying, right? Because um, I was bullied, um, you know, I went to school in two different countries. I was bullied in three different languages. And, you know, because so, so bullying, it doesn't mean that it could be an assault or someone hit you. It could also, I was made invisible, so I just don't exist. And so I think people need to be aware of that. And I think as adults, um, like what you said in the beginning, Karen, it doesn't, and also you too, Dave, it doesn't disappear just like that. And it just, it constantly, you have to constantly affirm yourself, reminding yourself. And the movie, actually, it's very visceral. I mean, I could feel, you know, what Dave is going through, right. what um, everyone else is going through. It's it's rather, and even my team, my whole team went, and it's very visceral for all of us. And we had to have a conversations about that and the impact of it. And the reason why I found it super happy, healthy kids is because I thought maybe we can raise the kids from the beginning, you know, like elementary kids, because how to like spread kind words and kind act. And that alone is a skill, right? People said, oh, you just be kind. No, not everybody knows how to be kind. Right. Not everybody knows uh, what to say the right word. No one has, you know, like in our in our program, it's like no one can sit alone. I mean, even though we're with COVID with three feet distance, but we always like, if someone is being alone, someone always asks, hey, how was your day? Just that little um, extra kindness. Sure. I think that's, that's really what we focus on. And that's what f f focusing on super happy, healthy kids. And I'm so glad to partner up with Dave, you know, because, um, it just, not just to partner up for the movies, but just merely to share the love and explaining, Hey, we were bullied once too, and how to avoid doing it. Like what you're doing with your podcast, right. Just to share the message. Well, isn't it true that, you know, I look at the three of us. Mm. We are three totally different people from mm. different areas of life. Um, and we were brought up differently. So in our each of our cultures, we we think of bullying may be the same, but then mm. it may be differently, okay? And one of the things I shared with Dave in my first podcast with him, I grew up thinking that my friends were bullying me. Mm. And they may have been, now that I look back, it's like, I'm not sure why I felt that much um, distance from them, but I thought I heard things growing up. I wasn't included in the way that I wanted to be included. And now that I look back, part of it is, that was partially my fault as well. And so I think we have to think about, you know, what is really happening and how we interpret these things. And in today's world, conversation is more important than it ever was. So I love the fact that your group is about raising happy people. That <laughs> is wonderful. But the reality of it is we can't be happy all the time. No. no. So how do you go about this? Uh, in terms of like, well, you know, like some of the kids will say, oh my God, her dress is so ugly. And I thought, well, I'm not sure if that's kind words. And they said, but Miss Esther, I was just being honest. You know, so that's, um, that's like very challenging, right? You want to teach the kids to be honest and yet you want them to have a sensor or filter to what to say. And so, um, and I usually try, you know, this is when we have to stretch the empathy part, right? Um, you know, like, can you, Think about it and how the other persons will feel. 
So that's how we teach the kids. But then, you know, going back to what you said, but like how you feel that you really were not being excluded, but that's your own self love and self discovery later on. Right. right. So everyone has their own reality. And, you know, like what Dave felt like bully, his bully might not feel, I don't know what you're talking about. Right. So I think everyone has their own reality in terms like, you know, where we are and where we stand. And I think it's always going back when you put your eyes turned inward. But I think in the beginning, um, when in doubt, I think we just share kindness, right? We can't be happy. Like what you said, you can't be happy all the time. But I think um, when we stretch that, you know, your heart is a muscle. So when you constantly like doing workout, same thing, right? And it, it really stretch it out. And I think the most important thing is, is the empathy. And then knowing like, um, are you making good choices? That's the thing that we always ask the kids. So we ask them to discern themselves instead of telling them, don't do that. You shouldn't have done that. So we ask them, is that a good choice? Is that kind of words? Is that kind act? And then I always give the metaphor, like if you see someone with a wheelchair, do you ask, you wait for the person to, um, uh, to ask to please open the door for me or do you just open the door? So that's like the- that. Yeah. So that's, uh, and that's also, that's also for me, right? Do you, do you kick somebody when they're down um, really? Or can you just offer, Hey, can I help you? Are you okay? And then, then, then again, as, as it's also a balance too, like uh, are we being codependent, you know, or are we being nice? So it's, it's, it's always everything else. I think in life is a balance, but again, like back to you too, like, how would you know? I think how you know is uh, first thing that's easy because I'm a trained psychotherapist is like do a journal, right? And then so that you can then find that path that you're walking to and your own self-discovery where you can then start having the healing process with you or you can internalize it too, right? So you can internalize it. But in Dave's situation, he act flip it and make a movie out of it. Like, you know, even for my own situation, I flip it and to create a not-for-profit and then say, all right, let's see if I can use my experience to benefit others. Absolutely. Um, so I guess one thing that comes up for me is, is um, how, do, how can we be proactive about teaching kids and adults how mm -hmm. to be positive and build, and build um community and be, build ways of communicating so that we're not always always reactive you know what i mean there's things that happen all day in middle school where i can react to things but like my kids are doing a team project so tomorrow i want to give them sort of sentence starters or collaborative techniques to sort of build the positive communication so that we're not always reacting to things that are happen happening so i'm curious how, how is are there ways that you do that with the kids that you work with, or there's things that you suggest to like build that positive culture? Or I think communication. I think for my kids, I think we also have to understand that like Karen said in the beginning, culturally, like Asian people just don't hug and don't say anything. You know, we're just this, this silent culture, right? We, we don't complain, we don't, and then we internalize it. We just said, okay, it is what it is. Um, and I think we all have to look into also the uh, culture, culturally, the way the parents are, you know? So sometimes like in your middle school, we don't know what's going on with mom and dad and it affects the kids and the kids will react. But then the question is, how do you, how, how do you teach kids how to be kind? Or how do you even teach adults how to be kind? Um, and, and, and for my own situation as an adult, like how do you separate yourself when you said, all right, now you're becoming toxic and I can't be with you, you know, like building healthy boundaries, right? Like, how do you know what your healthy boundaries is? So, I mean, with your movie, uh, uh, my team and I, we had to ask, whoa, clearly he wasn't building that healthy boundaries or he did not know where the healthy boundaries are. So I think the first thing to know is your visceral, like, how do you feel? If you feel yucky, right? Then something is not right. And what do you do to deal with it? Because, and some kids don't have the um, emotional intelligence or the, the words, how to explain it, right? So what we do ourselves, we just make them draw. 
to their feelings. Right. You know, and that's the first thing. And then when they start knowing how to write, then they 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 write. But again, like, how do you do when they don't become reactive? The easy way for us, because like everybody have something to say. So what we do is like almost like almost the what is it? The passing the stick like we uh, and this is a this is a skill to being able to listen to someone's reality, which which back to you, like Karen, right? When somebody's reality, whether it's an allegation or it's false, whatever, it, it's their reality. Like the movie is about Dave's reality, and so it's it's understanding um, understanding that reality and then being able to just breathe and then listen. So that's so what I do is I have a timer. So I usually said, all right, you have one minute to say whatever you want, as long as you don't you know, stick with the I word, right? Don't no, like, well, you did this and you did this and that's why I justify it so I can do this. And so then the other person will have one minute and then no interruption. So so that might help in terms of you doing that. But as in terms of community, like who wants to be nice to everybody? I mean, it's like so hard. Um, it's an effort, you know? And I think my mentor taught me that it's easy to hate somebody. Yeah, that's like a given. You can hate somebody, you can cuss at somebody, you can just dislike somebody. You can just it's 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 so easy. But it's more difficult like like uh love takes a long time. You need to constantly reaffirm yourself and reaffirm others and it's like almost like raising a plant. Fertilizer, water, nice sunlight, right right temperature. It's constant. It's a constant effort to be good. But it's easier to just be a nasty person, you I know? I thought of that, you know? Uh, and I mean, when I think about my upbringing, okay, um, it was repeated over and over again. Be nice. Uh, even if that other person is not nice, you have to be nice. And I think that's why I thought I was being bullied because mm-hmm. I was always trying to be the nice one and I wasn't getting that reflection back, Mm. not necessarily were they being bad, but I wasn't getting that same positive feedback. And so I grew up thinking, well, you don't like me. Mm -hmm. You're saying things about me. And I think that's part of the culture as well, because my mother wanted three perfect children and she never got them, but that's (laughs) 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 But Dave, when I when I watched the film, um, and I knew it was your story, and I knew you had told me ahead of time it was not biographical, um, but as I watched it, part of me was getting angry at you. Did has anybody else ever said that? <laughs> not not really. Um getting angry at me. No, not really. I think you're the first, Karen. Because (laughs) I saw so much, even though there was weakness, I saw so much power behind you that I just wanted you to like, like, I know how to fix this, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And I didn't expect it, you know, and I expected it to be in a, in a calm way. Um, And I'm not sure why. And I went back and watched it a second time to see you know, did I feel the same way? And I did. Um, and, I, and I'm just curious because um, it was heartbreaking to watch the movie. Mm. Yeah. And for me, too. I mean, like I said, it was very visceral. I mean, I think part of us, like my team and I, we had this long discussion because it was in New Paul's and we had like about an hour and a half. So we, we discussed uh, at length about the movie. Um because I wanted to, them to see what it feels like to be bullied and how we're going to do it with the kids. Um, it's visceral for us because we feel like, Dave, come on, snap out of it. You should have like say something and do something and whatever. Right. And that's really part of us. And I think we, we start, you know, uh, Dave, because it's like a group sessions in the car. We wanted to, uh, <laughs> for you to like, we wanted, we want to like extend our anger to you and then, and then hit your nemesis. And that's really what we want. But I think what was good was that we had to um, breathe and take the pace with you. 
which we are obviously not wasn't happy because that's why it became visceral. We like it was very hard for us to watch it. Um, for at least for me, mostly because I was like, "Whoa, Dave! You know, you could. There's so many things that you could have done, but it was your process, you know. And we have to acknowledge that. And that's probably, again. Um, so I was just mostly projecting onto like what I would like to do. I'm so curious with both of you. So what were you projecting? Uh, what were you <laughs> fantasizing? What would you? What were you wanting, Ricky, not me, to do? <laughs> We need to do a second movie, part two. Part yeah. two. <laughs> They're healing process. Okay. See, I guess when I was watching it, and maybe I was seeing you as Dave, who I had interviewed, mm -hmm. and then seeing you as Ricky, but I, I just kept thinking, you know, you don't have to be in this much pain. You know, mm -hmm. that you really knew what to do to get out of the pain. Um, and that really is not fair because that means I'm putting my thoughts mm. on you, Dave, and you, the character. And, you know, that says a lot that that's what we do in our culture. You know, we, we project, well, I expect that you're going to act a certain way because of what I know about you. So what did you want him to do? Did you want him to just knock the guy out? Or I'm, I'm, I'm curious. <laughs> um, well, not necessarily <laughs> knock the guy out. Um, I wanted you to see that, you know, maybe you were partially wrong. Ah, okay. Well, that takes time. You yes. know, it's interesting because when I wrote this in my 20s, it was really a revenge fantasy. Simply mm -hmm. that. It was, a, it was a revenge fantasy of like, I was, I was bullied and this is my revenge. And there's a reason I think that it, did, it didn't happen in my 20s 20 years ago because there was a whole other arc to this film that hadn't been played out in my life and, and that was really about the inner the inner journey right so it it did take a very long time for me to recognize oh wow i had a part in this and i'm very much like that mm. like that other guy we're, we're we're a mirror image of each other um so yeah, we don't we don't know till we know. And there's a lot of people that live in that denial for their entire lives. Absolutely. And I think that's why the discussion is so important because as I'm saying this, it's like, you know, I'm putting on you the character, okay, the way I want it to come out. Mm -hmm. And that's really what that is not what this movie is about. It's mm -hmm. about how the character gets out of it. And you know what? Uh, it's real life. Mm. That's what we yeah. wanted. You know, we, we've Absolutely. seen the movie where the, the, you know, the guy who's been bullied confronts his bully, you know? I mean, we've seen that story. I grew up with that story. I love that story. Yeah. The underdog, you know, it's Rocky or Karate Kid. And I love that story. But you, these days you have to do something different. Right. Because we've all seen it all. So there's got to be some kind of twist. And the twist here, I think, was really, well, I don't want to say too much. Um, but we see a different perspective on the bully and we see a different perspective on the bullied. Right. right that I think is a little bit surprising and, and hopefully a, a fresh take. And also for you to look into like the balance of the yin and the yang too, you know, and, and, and that's really the healing process. Right. I mean, like I said from the beginning, you know, it's so easy to just hate somebody, boom, you punch somebody, but um, it's harder to have to run through the process, like the washing machine, you know, you wet all your clothes and then the detergent went in and then you'd spin and spin and spin and then you can, then you, you know, rinse and rinse and rinse. So that's, I think the process that's, um, that's challenging. I agree. And that process is painful. So now I kind of get what you're saying, Karen is like, just do it. It's like, <laughs> it's like I'm dealing with a neighbor right now. I'm right. dealing with a neighbor who's, you know, just moved in you know, uh, slamming doors, oh, no. loud, loud pounding music. And like, it's like, okay, what do I do with that? Because I go back to like my childhood and not that re-traumatization of like where we go when we get re-traumatized. Like, oh, I'm 12 years old again and my stepfather's threatening to kill me. You know what I mean? Like that, that's where, you know, that's where I go, you know? And so I'm not going to react from that space because if I react from that space, it's not going to go well. It's going to be uh, an altercation of some kind. 
So it's like, how do I process it? How do I take it to my spiritual program? How do I take it to God? How do I process it so I can confront the situation in a way that's going to be a win-win, hopefully going to be a win-win. And that does take time. That takes a little germination. And I don't like it either. I just want to go over and deal with it. Right. Um, and so being able to sit with that fear, being able to sit with that ambivalence is what Ricky was going through for much of the, of the story. Mm-hmm. Do I go the Danny way, the Buddhist way, or do I go the Andy way, which is the right way? Mm-hmm. It's like, there is no one right way. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's kind of a combination of both. And again, that's kind of what we were exploring and, and I'm still exploring it in my, in my life. I still go through it. Yeah. Well, and I'm glad that you brought that up because, you know, we think that we get over certain things. Okay. Like, okay. You know, it's, not your stepfather, it's somebody else. And I lived through that and I know how to do it. And we assume that we should be okay for the rest of our life. Yes, it's that voice, and, right? That pounding right. voice that literally is like you, I'm not gonna even say the words, but it's like you wimp, you know what I mean? You wimp, I don't just go over there and deal with it. You, especially yep. for men, because mm. that's, that's, that's the mythology we grew up with. Mm. It's like you, anything but that. Mm-hmm. So you got it. You got to quiet that voice. And how do you quiet that voice? You become the bully. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, and so, yeah. and we've dealt with that toxic masculinity. That's, that's the big catch word that people are talking about. What is toxic masculinity? It's that, right. It's the inability to, to process. It's the inability to not have to deal with everything in, in a sort of macho way. Yeah. You know? um, but I think, I think different. also, we also have to clear up though, just because we do everything being centered and being grounded or being doing the Buddha's way or doing the Zen way, even if we do it the right way, doesn't mean that the reaction will be all <laughs> culture and clean, right? right. Exactly. We, like we say this and whoa, they went unhinged and go to another planet. So right. I think we want, we want the listener to understand too, just because you do your meditation, you do your yoga, you do all the right thing and you say the right thing and you tape it and people see it. Whoa, you did all the right thing. And this person just went like unhinged. Um, so when that happens, actually, and I tell this to the kids, so we count our blessings, we're not like that. Because after that, you go like, whoa, you know, it's not us now, it's them. Right. We just count our blessings, you know, that, that we're not at all like them. Pray for them. Yeah. Right. You know, I talked about this in a, another podcast earlier uh, this week. Uh, we were talking about domestic violence mm. and how uh, particularly women mm. and they go through domestic violence and they go through treatment and they have support. They believe okay, I'm all right now. This, mm-hmm. you know, it was never going to happen to me again. I know what happened in the past. I am clear. Mm-hmm. And then all it takes is one person to look at them cross-eyed and, mm-hmm. and it all comes back. Mm-hmm. Now that, you know, I'm putting all this together with this story and that, it is important that our listeners understand that we can do all the great work we need to do, Mm -hmm. but just a tiny spark can bring it all back. And it's up to us to try to find that way. Like you said, Dave, I'm not going to react right now. I've got, I've got, I've got to zone in because if I react, what am I gaining? Mm. Hardest thing in the world. One thing I came up with with teaching was whenever I'm in fight or flight, my only job is to get out of fight or flight. Mm. And that's so hard. It's like, I want to deal with it now. Mm. I think that's what the audience wants too. It's like, deal with it now. It's like Hollywood, just give us what we want now. It's like, no, but life doesn't work that way. Right. And um, it's hard. It's really hard. I think that the one thing that's also, you know, good, I mean, for all of us too, and part of the movie is like having an advisor having a friend, having someone that can listen to all your craziness, you know, and that's really hard, you know, like, like I tell them, even my kids, you know, my students, I said, you don't have to have 20 best friends, just one, you know, and then just, just someone that you can, you know, and, and, and the, the easiest for me to give them the metaphor, because they're kids, they're like age three to nine. I just said, just think about you going to travel. You want somebody to be able to help you unpack 
your luggages, not add on to your stuff that you already have and make your suitcase much more harder to close. Just have someone that, and this is also for us as adults, sure. right? Is this person helping us unpack our luggage or is this person adding more burden to us? And if it's adding more burden, can you hold this for like a day? And if you cannot, it becomes toxic. Are you, are, are you brave enough or courage enough, courageous enough to just say, you know, I got to go and, 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 and let go and be at peace and let go and love. Right. And that's, and that's, and then find that inner peace. That's also challenging for each of us in our own self-discovery. Well, because we, we've been brought up to want it all. <laughs> right? And we and we look we look around and we hear these people, whether it's on Facebook or whatever. I have five thousand friends, mm. and I look at people and go, "No, you don't. You have five thousand followers." Okay, mm. people who either, you know, want to be like you or bully you or something. Okay, they're those five thousand are not your friends. Okay, do you have friends? Yes but you have to define what that friend is. And like you said, and I love the analogy, can somebody help me pack or unpack my mm -hmm. suitcase? Because yeah. that suitcase is our life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that, you know, that fight or flight thing as well. If, can I talk, is there somebody I can talk to who can help me to get out of that space? Mm -hmm. you know, remind me you know, that I'm not that 12 year old kid that was getting bullied. And uh, it's important, whether it's a therapist or a friend or some kind of mentor, it's important. So you mentioned very slightly, Dave, and I know you can't give anything away, okay? You're going to be in another film festival coming up. Um, are you going to go out, back out to New York for that? Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, we have a lim limited amount of these things. We've been waiting for two decades, so I I'll be there. And I'm yeah, looking forward to hanging out again with you. Yeah, Dave. that'd be great. Yeah. Be great to see you. That yeah. That is absolutely wonderful. And it sounds like you're taking this to another level at some point, which I think is absolutely wonderful. And some of our listeners who maybe only will see the trailer right now will then finally get to be able to see the bigger picture, which would be wonderful. Um, but Esther, I have a question for you about sure. bullying, okay? So this whole pandemic has been terrible for all of us. Mm -hmm. And especially in certain areas, mm -hmm. Asians have been targeted. Yes. And that, I mean, just inflates bullying. Mm -hmm. How are you dealing with it? Because I interviewed a gentleman this morning, an Asian gentleman, and he kept thanking me for being nice. Mm. And I thought nothing of it. I mean, we were, we were having a conversation. We were having a podcast. He's a human being. Mm. It, didn't, it didn't even come across. Mm. And he said, there are a lot of people who won't talk to me and won't have me on their podcast mm. because I'm Asian. Mm. And that really hurts. So mm. you're, you're in New York. Mm. what's it like what's going on can you tell us well um there's a huge increase of asian violence you know and like i found a super happy healthy kids and we deal with the elementary kids and my team and i were like thinking what do we do with this increase of asian violence because due to pandemic or at the end of the day you know who cares due to what the the result's still the same sure but the Asian increase and the elected officials say, blah, 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 almost like the peanuts gallery, wah, wah, wah. Okay, but they still constantly um, Asian. I mean, we just recently where a, a woman just literally pushed Asian, another Asian woman, just pushed just like that on the video in an incoming car. And thank God the car stopped. And, you know, so there's so many incidents. One of my friends got assaulted. I'm a second degree black belt. And I don't even go out at seven and, and eight at night when the sun, I mean, the, for me to have to have to build boundaries for myself it's in New York. It's terrible. City, yeah. It's terrible. So I founded the AAPI for Change, the Asian American Pacific Islander for Change. And it's aapiforchange.org for a lot of reasons. So now I go to middle school and high school and talk about 
how they can be an ally for Asian American uh, because you know Asian typically like we don't say anything they make they make us look invisible and or they said oh you're just being sensitive or whatever that they said so sometimes like um, I myself like you know, uh, being gaslighted, right? Um, like when we're talking about bullying, we talk about the increase of Asian violence. This is when, like, not not that long ago, when someone looked at me and said, hey, Esther, when am I going to get my laundry? And I said, I'm sorry? I have to, like, double check what he just said. When am I going to get my laundry? And I said, I don't even get my laundry. I don't even <laughs> do my laundry. I get my laundry done. And in New York, you can get your laundry done for like a dollar a pound. And so just to let you know, and I mean, I pay for that. But the thing is, like, people say it, even though they're insensitive. And I think for Asian, they just need to nip it at the, you just nip it. And I said, you know what, that's not appropriate. Um, that you're making a racist comment. So I think we need um, Asian, particularly, this is why the AAPI that I founded, because I have to, again, it's a skill, right? I have to learn how to speak up and say, that's not okay. This is not okay. And, you know, so a lot, and sometimes I have a delay reaction as well. Yeah. And this is the part where I blame myself. I blame my parents because I can, you know, so because in a, um, I was waiting in a doctor's office. And, you know, we were getting all our COVID tests like, like a year ago. We all of us were waiting. And I got up using the restroom and then just talked to my friend. How I hold your jacket while you're going to the bathroom. All of a sudden, these women didn't target anybody else, target me and said, why don't you wait outside? And I said, this is my chair. So I'm sitting there. But my friend who's Latino, she picked it up right away. And I said, and then said to her, why are you picking on her? Why her? Everybody else is there. Why are you picking up on her? Like, I had to think for a minute when she said that, because I, you know, with all the knowledge that I know, this just happened like a year ago. And I, like I said, I had to think, whoa, Esther, you just had a delay or reaction because she was right. She, she just, she didn't pinpoint on anybody else, but me, because I was an easy target. And that's, she literally, that's what she said to her too. Is it because she's Asian? She's an easy target. And that's what you said. So I think to answer your questions. And I think Asia need to speak up. That's number one. And I think everybody else surrounding the Asian community needs to start taking videos and start like helping out and saying, hey, that's not okay. You know, and I think we also need to look at our government, right? Because it's from the beginning from the template. So if the templates say it's Chinese um, virus and everything else, then it, it built this pandemic like the tsunami anger that we like we have so many deaths so let's just blame it on somebody so I think that has a lot to do with everything else but knowing all that um for me it's like I when I talk to people I just said how can you be an AAPI ally how can you be an ally with the increase of Asian violence what can you do? And I, I interview actually our district attorney, um, Alvin Brack, who's the first African American district attorney. I'm going to interview, um, you know, I'm going to try to interview. I interview a couple of elected, elected official, um, you know, and just talking about um, this movement and what are you going to be doing about it? And Absolutely. also, and and for me to go out there, right, to become a role model so that uh, people see, oh. Um, there's somebody else that look like me that can do something. And, and, and that's something that Asian, like, like, I don't like my parents didn't raise me to be pol pol political or activist. It's not something that we talk about. You become a lawyer, you become a doctor, you become something else, but it's not something that we talk about. And, and then that's something that as a community activist, I also um, tell people it's something that we need to talk about. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you should not be bullied. Nobody, oh. should, nobody should be bullied. Yeah, um, and I think your comment that we do have to speak up, mm -hmm. somebody, you know, maybe, uh, I can't say the woman was, you know, it was a mistake what she was doing. She knew what she was doing. But sometimes people do make mistakes. And mm -hmm. so if we speak up, maybe we can correct it right there and then. Um, but it's like you said earlier, Dave, you can't do it with a knee jerk reaction because if you yeah. do, then everybody 
is on the wrong side. Sometimes somebody else needs to speak up and your friend did, you know, I remember having a friend African-American when I was younger and we went to a beach club and somebody made a comment of like, why are you here or something? Mm. And I was like, whoa, 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 what? You know, like, because, you know, he might've reacted from that place, you know, that fight or fight place. And then he might've looked bad. It's like, sometimes, you know, we do need to step in and speak up. And I mean, it just saddens me and it angers me, um, you know, what you've talked about, Esther, in terms of the um, violence against Asians, in part because of irresponsible uh, leaders in government making, you know, ridiculous, ridiculous um, uh, comments or accusations that somehow because a virus came from China, that somehow we would blame China for a virus as if a virus somehow, you know what I mean? Like, as if, you know, people had some say in where a virus is going to go. It's just so ludicrous that we're living in times like that and that people will follow, you know, that, that sort of, um, you know, vitriolic um, talk is, uh, it's very upsetting. Yeah. It's very and upsetting. Vision. And I think, and this is again, so um, back to the even bullying, right? So, I mean, all of us are investing to how to make this world different. And like you're making the movie, Karen is doing the blog post, I have my not-for-profit. So I think if we uh, clone and repeat ourselves, that's what I always tell my team, we need to clone and repeat in order to work. It's almost like the Harry Potter movie. You know, the Voldemort is creating an army. We got to create an army too, you know? Yeah. So it's almost similar. The same thing with like, you know, with the yin and the yang, it's constant, constant fight and constant struggle how to form that balance. And we can't lose sight of that. And even though as much as discouraging it can be, and even though I can say, oh, I kind of blessing, I'm not like them. Or we, we share kindness even to the undeserving. And that's sometimes very challenging, but we must right it's our path it's our journey and if we're not going to do it who's going to do it so the only thing that we can do like you know you making the movie you having the podcast Karen and it's doing like all right now we clone and repeat we're going to keep teaching people how to be kind and wow. it's hard it's hard not to go to the dark side right I felt myself getting a little bit angry and you know what yeah. I mean then we become we become what we're you know what we're speaking up against Right. You know, uh, anger is anger. Violence is violence. Hatred is hatred. It doesn't matter if it's left, right, you know, what political side you're on or what have you. Um, so, yeah, I got to kind of we got to kind of take the high road and, and try to be positive and, and build build communication. I'm actually watching Star Wars right now with my kids. Uh -huh. on the hero's journey and, you know, bringing bringing that to another generation. They don't they don't know Star Wars. They certainly don't know the original. Yeah, but, um, that's challenging side, not to get the dark side. The dark side is very tempting, <laughs> yeah. right? It's so easier to get there, you know? Yeah. It's like, come this way. And it's, it's extremely tempting, you know, well, it's harder. And if you follow Hollywood, there is so much dark side in yeah. entertainment. Um, on the weekends, um, I switch hats and I'm an IT professional and I work with young kids and they talk about all this dark life around them and I'm going, but there's all this excitement and, you know, new things happening. And they look at me and they go, yeah, I may not live long enough for that. And I, why do you say that? And then they'll reference a Marvel movie to me. And it's like, you know what? I'm glad I don't watch those movies uh, <laughs> because I can think about the sun in this, in all the kindness that is around us. And you're right. I think we do have to clone ourselves by repeating over and over again um, and understanding the people that maybe just don't understand where we're coming from. Give them a chance to absorb it. And um, let's just make this world a little bit better each day. Yeah. But Karen, you must go see the new Marvel movie by Sean Gee. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's that uh, that's an Asian one. And it's oh, it? He's okay. the first Asian um, hero and they, they do it in, in Mandarin and English. So that's the first, and it's actually pretty positive. Okay. You know, it's positive and he has its moment, but, but it's really, um, it's a very, it's, it, I, I say it's very good. Have you seen it? Um, Dave? I, I have not seen it yet. No, I've heard a lot about it. I, I want to. 
Yeah, so it's it's good. So definitely go see. That will be the first Marvel that you're going to be seeing. Oh, and my my son will not believe it if I go, but you know, <laughs> I probably should surprise him. So also, it's um, you know, I go to movies um to support. And because, you know, like uh, with, with they to really support the artist, right? So I don't go to the movies because I'm anything, but I support because this is the first Asian and uh, the first Asian Marvel hero. How Good wonderful. timing. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're going to keep doing the, the bully blog because it's really, really important. Yes. Um, and we encourage our listeners to, um, you know, write in and tell us what's what's going on. Mm-hmm. How can you how can you be the next person to help? Uh, how can we stop this infiltration into each other's lives? And um, I hope, Dave, that you will continue to heal. And I can't wait to hear about the next festival. Um, you know, I would love to be there, but um, I will be in upstate New York in November. So. Uh, that's maybe you just gotta go downstate. But maybe yeah. there, well, you know, maybe there will be another festival. You know, you never know. Yeah, uh, and then we can go. I can take you to Chinatown and have dim sum. Ooh, there you go. There you go. Sounds good. <laughs> well, everybody, take care. Esther it was wonderful uh, meeting you. Thank you, Karen. And thank you for, you for inviting. Absolutely. And Dave, have fun in school tomorrow um, with the project. I can't wait thank to hear you. about it. Thank you, Karen. Thanks for having us on. And again, if you want to go to the reunionfilm.com, you can see all about the Soho Film Festival. And um, again, we're, we're about to get distribution. And we're going to be released in, releasing the film in February. So it should be on, you know, various different uh, platforms. Um, so We'll keep everybody informed. Yeah. Take awesome. care. Bye-bye okay. now. Bye. Bye.